friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We have an exciting afternoon. We are going to be reclaiming one of our green stalks. So I needed to grab a tarp so that we don't make a huge mess on the patio. So we are in the grow room right now and what we need to do is shop for some fall seeds so that we can turn over the green stalk that is kind of an eyesore out there. One of my green stalks I had planted out completely in nasturtiums and it was absolutely beautiful. But the nasturtiums have come to their life end and now it's a little bit of an eyesore out there. So what we're gonna do is replant it. We're gonna clean it all up and completely replant it. I've never done this before, so this is gonna be a fun experiment. So what we need to do first is shop for some seeds. These are some seeds that I just bought <laughs> that I need to put away. I'm gonna put those up there. And we're gonna kind of go shopping for what we're gonna plant out in the green stock. So one thing I have not planted yet at all this year are beets. So let's get some beets planted. I haven't planted any spinach yet this year. I've heard carrots do really well in a green stock. Oh, let's do some lettuce, definitely. I don't have any lettuce that's good to eat out there right now. Radishes. I've got some radishes seeds that I had saved from last year, so let's try planting those as well. Swiss chard. I haven't planted any Swiss chard this year yet. Cilantro. Let's plant a ton of this. And maybe, I think it's, I think it's, I was going to say maybe bush beans. Oh, kale. Let's plant some kale. Let's close this up, get this moved over. I think we still have time for some bush beans. So maybe, let's see if I can find... These are Blue Lake bush beans and these are a 50 to 65 day to maturity. I think we can plant these. So let's bring two of these out there. And I think, well, let's see. Should we plant some snow peas? These are six, uh, 57 to 60 day to harvest. And it says that these get 24, hmm, it doesn't say how tall they get. I don't have the, the trellising thing for the green stock. Green stock makes these things that you can put around the outside for vining type plants. I don't own any of those. So I think we'll wait on anything that's vining. So look at all these seeds we can still plant in August. It is August. We are gonna get all of these seeds direct sowed into the green stock. But before I run out there, since I'm in here, this is the first time I've been in the grow room today. I wanna to take this opportunity to water our fall crops. These fall crops are gonna be going out into the main garden and they are looking fantastic. Our second set of cauliflower that I planted here is looking beautiful, almost 100% germination on it. This cauliflower is from seeds that I had purchased from Dollar Tree two years ago, maybe three years ago, and it looks great. Now this over here, I don't see any germination yet. These are our green onions for a fall planting. And then up here we have our cabbage, that's looking really good. This is our cauliflower that I planted first, poor germination. And then we have a couple broccoli over here. I went ahead and I grabbed a basket so that I can put all of these seeds in a basket. And I'm definitely gonna need gloves for what we're doing today because what we need to do, well, I'll show you. We have to turn over the soil in the green stalks. I've never done this before, so this is gonna be fun to do it together. So I've got some gloves. I'm definitely a gardener that likes to wear gloves. And now what we should probably get, we could probably use this tool for what we need. Let's go out there with our tarp. So this here is the green stalk and you can see these nasturtiums are done. They have put on a lot of seed. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna come out here. I'm probably gonna have a ton of volunteer 
nasturtiums next year underneath this Japanese maple. And I'm gonna collect a ton of these seeds. I'm gonna let them dry out. I don't know what variety is which with the seeds, but we will plant a bunch of these next year and see if they'll germinate for us. This is the first time I am collecting nasturtium seeds and they are so easy. I did not realize how easy they would be to collect. They're basically the size of a pea. Once the flowers bloom, then they create a pea and then the seeds drop on the ground. And so I'm just going around and collecting them. And I wanna collect quite a few, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seeds here because hopefully we'll be able to plant these and grow these out next year. I've got a paper bag here. I'm gonna take my nasturtium seeds. I'm gonna put them in this paper bag, let them dry out, and then I'll put them in something smaller. But for now, that'll work. Get back to work. About two and a half weeks ago, I had realized that my nasturtiums weren't looking super great, and I had the thought that I could try to cut them back and get a second wind out of growth on these. But I thought that they wouldn't look as good as they did when they originally bloomed and they were in full bloom like that for about five weeks. So I got a good amount of time of just an absolutely stunning tower of flowers. Now my other green stock, which you can't see in this picture has the petunias in it and it is still in full bloom. So when I realized that I wanted to turn this over into a fall crop, I stopped watering these nasturtiums because I didn't want these tower sections to be super heavy and I figured it would be easier to pull out the nasturtiums if they, they were dried. So if you're wondering why they do look this kind of piddly and sad, it is because one, that you know, nasturtiums are annuals, they only bloom for so long and then they're done for the season. Once they produce all those seeds, the, their life has done, they have done their job. All they're trying to do is reproduce their genetics and they did that so then they died and then i went ahead and stopped watering them so that this job would be a little bit easier for me to plant the fall crop i decided i needed to come out and get an actual shovel because my little i think that's called a hori hori tool was not going to cut it for what i need to do next and while i'm out here i wanted to get some fertilizer but of course I didn't bring a container to put the fertilizer in. Oh, and I came out here for my wheels. On my green stalks, I like when they have wheels on it. And I didn't, for some reason, put wheels, even though I had them on this one particular one. And I want to do that. So I wanted to come out here and get wheels. But I need to figure out how I'm gonna be able to, this is a little bit big for my fertilizer. And it is, oh, here. This bag's basically empty. I'll just put some fertilizer in this bag and bring this out. Perfect. I'm gonna stab myself. Let me set that down. I know I need to amend the soil with some compost, but I'm also going to amend it with just some of this organic fertilizer. I'll plan for one scoop per tier, so I'll grab five scoops, maybe about a half a scoop-ish. Three. that's four and that's five and it is a sauna in here Josh and I were out here yesterday harvesting blueberries not really harvesting more like eating blueberries this is the previous owner's garden and they had planted six blueberry bushes in here and they are phenomenal so depending on time I'm gonna come and pick these today as well because they are ready and it started us because we walked out here <laughs> to harvest the blueberries and there was a deer right there that hopped and left right there. So I'm really grateful for our deer fence because without that, there would be no garden <laughs> this year. One of the reasons you want to fill your green stalks all the way to the top is because over time the soil settles. So when I first filled this, if you watched me plant these out, I filled the soil all the way to the tippy top. And yes, I did pull the roots out. So there, that was part of why there's less volume in it. But overall, it's more because it has settled.
So the first thing I did was lay that tarp down. I laid the tarp down because I just wanted my cleanup to be a little bit easier on this day. So that is what I did. That was actually my dad's idea when we put my mom's together. Now, I have never turned over a green stalk from one crop to the next because I've always started basically from scratch. Because last year when I grew in them, I had one that was filled with strawberries and then we moved in August. And so we went ahead and just emptied the one that I had some flowers and veggies in and we started over this year. So I'm kind of excited to try this experiment and bring you along so you can kind of see what it looks like to start over. So here are the wheels. So the base can either have wheels or it can have spinning or both. And I really like both. So I'm glad that I finally went ahead and put the wheels on this one because I like to be able to move it around. And I thought because I'm growing vegetables in this, I'm gonna to need to be able to move it around and turn it so that it gets proper sun. So that's why I went ahead and wanted to get those installed. So this is my first time kind of revamping a green stock. And I was watching Rachel from that 1870s homestead and I've watched her do this. And what her recommendation is, is to amend the soil just like you would if you were gardening in a raised bed or in ground garden. Once you know, you've grown something in it, that plant kind of takes up the nutrients it needs in order to grow and it can deplete the soil, especially in a planter because you're watering it and the nutrients can kind of just run out. So what I did is I removed about, I would say about 15% of the soil. I don't know exactly, that's a guesstimate. And then I took that compost that I purchased and I went ahead and I put the compost in. You want to keep your soil in your green stalks or any real container gardening really light and fluffy. And so I, next year when I amend it, I might actually remove some of it and add some more potting soil so that it keeps, or maybe I'll add compost and some vermiculite because that those are the little white things that you see, kind of like pebbles that you see in potting soil that keeps your potting soil really aerated and fluffy. I'll have to think about that. We'll see how this goes. So what I've done is I've decided to do each tier in the same crop. So you could get as creative as you want in each of the little sections. You could plant individual crops in each section. I decided that I wanted to do each tier is going to be a separate crop. So we end up doing two tiers of cilantro and I just sprinkle the cilantro seeds pretty densely and then I take my hand and I kind of brush the soil over the top and we get two tiers worth of cilantro. I do plan to plant a lot more cilantro in the main garden, but I wanted to see how well they do in this planter. This is another thing I've never done before where I plant into the green stalk where I have it disassembled like this. Every other time I've done it, I think, yes, I've never planted seeds in my green stalk before. So I've always had my tiers assembled and my whole tower assembled and then I planted my starts in that. But I figured since I was disassembling it to add the soil, I might as well go ahead and plant it while it's disassembled. So total, I end up doing two that are filled with, I have to think now, two that are filled with cilantro, two that are filled with carrots, one that is filled with radishes, the radishes that we had saved, plus I think I supplemented a little bit with some store-bought radish seeds, and then I do carrots and lettuce. So my thought is this is kind of like a salad bar type planter. Once I got everything planted out, then I started stacking my tiers onto my base, and I realized that I did not have my wheels in, they were not snapped in fully. So I did have to get Josh's help. <laughs> he came out and he helped me snap those wheels in properly. There are, that is really important that the wheels are snapped in properly so that, you know, the thing doesn't tipple over. And it is important that you have your green stock on a level surface. And I didn't realize you want that for a few reasons. You want it for stability, but you also want it on a level surface so that it waters properly, so that the water evenly trickles down the planter evenly. And I do take the time to make sure each one of the little snaps is snapped into place. And it is easier to do this when there is soil in the planter because the weight helps snap it into place. 
So once we get this all planted out and watered in, we are going to go inside and make some dinner tonight. It's been a great day and I end up getting really hungry. <laughs> you can see how it's kind of tilting. So I do take the time to make sure that it's all in there correctly and level. Another thing I want to point out are those hanging baskets. Those are some hanging baskets that I purchased from a local greenhouse and I am so impressed with the quality of them. I was thinking, well that greenhouse, you can take the planter because it's a metal planter with this like mesh insert and what they do is every year you can take your metal part of the hanging basket back and you can ask them to custom fill your basket. And I want to do that, but I also want to try to make my own hanging baskets this next year. I have tried to research petunia seeds and I have had the hardest time finding petunia seeds. If you guys have ever purchased petunia seeds and you have any recommendations where I could find them, I would greatly appreciate it. I can find really some generic colors, but when I was at the local greenhouse, if you went with me and my mother-in-law, we went for Mother's Day and we went shopping and we bought a bunch of plants. They had the most unique, beautiful petunia flower colors I have ever seen, ever. And I don't know if they're like, um, what's the word? Proprietary or if, you know, you have to buy them. If You, you might have to have a, um, like a wholesale business account, I don't know, to buy them. Um, you know, if they have like patents on them or what, but... I would love to try to, you know, grow some of my own, but we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Anyway, I'm cleaning up my mess here. We got it all, you know, turned over and replanted, and I wanted to get the patio back to a clean state state where we had started from. So I end up sweeping the patio, and there are so many seeds still left out underneath that Japanese maple. I'm thinking I'm going to have a ton of of volunteer nasturtiums underneath that Japanese maple. I do end up going out that evening and pulling quite a few more of the seeds to bring inside, but in general, I left probably a few hundred out there. So we'll see if we have a bunch of volunteer nasturtiums there. Now, when I planted, or when I water my green stalks and they're already planted out with established plants, I don't water each individual cell like I just did there but because I planted seeds I wanted to make sure that each one of the cells and the soil got really moist so I took my hose and I watered you know the around the whole sides and here are the other two that have the green beans and then here's the petunia one that's still in full bloom and absolutely beautiful and I think that this one is probably going to be in full bloom until frost kills it. Whew. I probably picked part of the hottest part of the day to be out there doing that but it's the time I had to do it, so that is when I did it. And I'm glad to have it done. <sighs> Warm. Josh brought me out some ice water while I was out there, which was perfect. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this stuff away. I just spent time cleaning this grow room. And I wanna keep it clean and I wanna keep these seeds organized because it is really nice when I come out here and I have everything organized and I can find everything I need to find. It's definitely more enjoyable than when I'm digging around. So I don't have these in alphabetical order. I don't have time for that. Just it's really been helpful to have a cold hardy box and then a warm hardy box and then I can just grab what I need when I need it. And then one of my boxes is flowers. So I didn't get any kale or Swiss chard planted, which I'm okay with because I have so much kale out there. And I didn't get any more beans planted, which is fine because I probably will be sick of beans by the time the summer's over and I won't want any more <laughs> beans. I also purchased some seeds here that were on sale and I should go ahead and take a minute and I'm gonna put these away too. Put those away while I'm at it. And then we're going to go inside and make dinner, which I am so excited about. We're going to have tacos. You all have seen me make tacos before. This is just cooking with what I have and what sounds really good. I want tacos tonight and fresh 
salsa because the tomatoes are coming in, the onions are coming in, the cilantro is coming in. So I want tacos. So we're going to make tacos. I did not find a creative recipe. I mean, I, I'll get creative when we get in the kitchen, but I didn't search for a new recipe tonight for dinner or anything. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> it's been too busy of a day today. Okay, so I have winter squash. I'm not making homemade tortillas or anything either. I found some tortillas in the freezer. And so that's what, I saw them in the freezer today and I thought, you know what? That is what I'm gonna make for dinner. And luckily, Josh loves tacos too. What is the one food that you could eat multiple times a week and not get sick of? For Josh and I, it's Tex-Mex. So this year was the first time I planted Aster and I'm gonna plant another variety next year. I am gonna be planting way more Snapdragons. Snapdragons are some of my absolute new favorite flower. And I'm not sure why winter squash is in the flower box, but that's okay. Cosmos. Zinnias. I don't know if I have a straw flower one. We'll just stick those there. Earlier today, we did a bunch of canning. So, I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm hot. But here. You know what? I've got my nasturtiums in this bag, which is kind of a silly huge bag for the nasturtium seeds. I just planted the, what kind of seeds? Radish seeds. Oh, spilling them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick them in this jar and let them dry in this jar. I'm not gonna put a lid on it or anything because I want them to have airflow. I keep the fan on in here when I'm not in here because we have the starts. This year, I guess, is the year for learning to save as many seeds as possible. One of you all gifted me a book on seed saving. I can put a picture of the book right here and I can link it down below. And I've been reading that book and one of the huge zucchinis, this is a, a white long zucchini. I opened it up and I was giving it to the chickens and these seeds looked mature to me in the zucchini. I have never saved zucchini seeds before. And I know that these possibly could be cross pollinated because I have summer squash, zucchini, and a bunch of winter squash, pumpkins and type things, and they can cross pollinate. But I thought, you know what? Let's just grab some of these mature looking seeds and stick them on a paper towel. Let those dry here. You know what I should do? Because I'm right here and I know what this is, I should put on here what kind of seeds these are. These are white, long zucchini. One of my new favorite zucchini varieties. I don't need to put the name on these because it is so easy to tell what nasturtium seeds look like. I had three different varieties of nasturtiums in that green stock. So this is just a variety, like a mishmash of seeds. I don't know which ones are which. So we'll just set those up there, set those seeds there. This room is put back together. Gloves in the glove drawer. I could have planted in the green stock my, um, oh, what's it called? Um, cilantro seeds that I had saved, but I didn't do that. And I will plant those in the main garden because I do, we'll see how well this cilantro does in this green stock, but I do want to plant more cilantro in the main garden as well because I want to try to harvest some more cilantro. Awesome. This room looks nice. And I think I'm going to go run out. We have tons of tomatoes and peppers in the house already. We have no onions. So maybe let's go harvest some onions and some cilantro for tonight's dinner. I can't decide if we want, if I want fajitas or what kind of tacos. I make tacos all the time, but they're always different, just depending on what flavors I decide to put together to make tacos. You know what I'll do? Let's go harvest, and then I'll ask Josh what he wants for dinner. 
Now we're out in the garden and my Van Gogh sunflowers from Sunflower Steve's bloom. So I wanted to show you those real quick because last time we were in the garden together, they had not bloomed yet. And I think they are so pretty. Even since I showed you these, about seven more of them bloomed and they're beautiful. So it's pretty windy. So what I was saying here is that I forgot there was a chore I wanted to do out here. I wanted to pull up all of this romaine and give it to the chickens, but I have not eaten today. <laughs> and so I got that far and I thought, what am I doing? It's hot out here. We need to stay focused and I'm gonna put this back and we will come to it another day. So I just end up leaving it, but we are able to finish harvesting so we can go inside and make some dinner. So here is a red cabbage. So we're going to make a slaw to go with tonight's dinner. And then we are going to get some other goodies. Here is the first red onions I harvest. They're still pretty little, but they, no, these are the second. I harvested some onions already one other time for another dinner. They're still kind of little, but they're definitely eatable and they have bulbed up more than I was expecting because when I planted them in the ground, they looked really sad. When I had got them in the mail, they were like moldy and gross. So I honestly didn't think I was gonna get any harvest. So a little onion is better than no onion. I don't know what I was thinking, thinking I was gonna pull up that lettuce and pick a bunch of blueberries right now. It is too hot out there. Josh and I will probably do that after he gets done with his work day. We'll go out there as a family and pick blueberries. That's what we were doing yesterday, but we weren't picking them to bring them inside. We were picking them to eat them. And I think that will be more enjoyable. We'll do that as dessert tonight. That will be our dessert. All right, I'm gonna wash up my onions that I harvested. One of the first things I'm going to get going for dinner tonight is some chipotle cilantro lime rice. Really, really easy. I'm going to cook the rice in the instant pot. I asked Josh how he wanted his chicken for dinner. That's what I have thawed. He said he didn't care. <laughs> Whatever I come up with, he'll be happy with. So three cups of rice, just white rice. I'm going to wash this. Do you wash your rice? Some people do, some people don't. And then I'm gonna put four cups of water and I'm gonna push the rice setting and I'm gonna let this cook while I get going on the other components of dinner. The next thing I'm gonna get going on is the chicken. I'm gonna make three chicken breasts, which is gonna give Josh and I plenty of leftovers. One thing that we can definitely eat leftovers with is taco stuff. That's why I'm making the rice, not so much necessarily for dinner tonight, but so that I can make up some burrito bowls and Josh can have that for lunch. So I'm just gonna dice this chicken into little cubes and then this can cook while I make the other components of tonight's dinner. And I'm totally gonna make this recipe up with what I can find on hand. I know that I have a little container of Chipotle's and adobo in the freezer from another recipe I made a week or so ago. So I'm gonna pull that out. All right, I need to get an apron on. <laughs> I don't feel fully put together in the kitchen if I don't have an apron on. So what I did earlier today, you can see all this. This is, we've got pickled peppers here. These are, oh my goodness, these are so good. These are banana peppers and some hot peppers in just a vinegar brine. And then I made some zucchini relish, so good. I wanna make some potato, I shouldn't be holding these yet. I wanna make some potato salad and put this in or deviled eggs. And then I made mock pineapple, crushed pineapple using zucchini. And I'm really excited about those. This dishwasher is clean and open and it is a tripping hazard, so I'm gonna close this. I've got my pan heating up here. That's why I need to move this. This is what I canned all of it in and it still has a ton of water in it, so it's a little heavy. So in here, let's go ahead and add, I think I'm gonna keep the chicken kind of simple. 
And then we're gonna make a honey chipotle dressing to make a coleslaw to go on top of our tacos. Some oil in there. This is just me making dinner. <laughs> just figuring out what I have on hand and using it to make dinner. So this is what I found in the freezer. I just had some whole wheat flour tortillas. I try to keep tortillas in the freezer when possible because they thaw really quickly. So this is hot. First thing I'm going to do is start prepping some of these veggies. Red cabbage first. Look how beautiful. We started this from seed together in March, I think. I don't know, actually. It smells really good, and the color of it is just stunning. These onions are gonna be for the salsa, so I'm just gonna prep all this vegetables. Today was a long day, and some days I had the energy to research and find new recipes and push my cooking skill ability and do all those sorts of things, and today was not one of those days. It was a busy day, and it's just a matter of getting something yummy and delicious on the table that Josh and I are both going to enjoy eating and do something that doesn't take much effort. Mental brain power, I should say. Not much mental brain power. I think I'm going to make the salad dressing first in this bowl here. For the coleslaw dressing, I'm going to start with some chipotles in adobo that I had frozen in the freezer. And I kind of just smashed them up in the bag so that they wouldn't be whole. That's probably way too many for the salad dressing. I don't want to freeze this again, so I'm going to take half of this and put it in with the chicken. And I'm going to mash up the chipotle just a little bit more. Now I'm going to add some honey, pepper, salt, cumin, coriander, some olive oil, lemon juice, and some sour cream to cool down the heat of the chipotles. Now I'm gonna try this. That is delicious. So good. One of the best dressings I've made in a while. I really like the added sour cream to it. I think that is so good. So now I'm gonna to try to shred this cabbage as thin as possible. And if this dressing is too much for how much cabbage I have, I have an, some green cabbage in the fridge I can mix in with it. This might be the perfect amount of cabbage. I wanna get this in the fridge cooling too, so that it's a little bit cooler to put on top of our tacos. I have not done anything with the chicken yet. some peppers in the freezer from the garden from this year and I'm gonna to toss those in here I'm also gonna throw in some garlic oh that's cheese not garlic I'm gonna season this up and I realized I didn't put any garlic or onion powder in my dressing but I think that's okay. I'm just gonna put some cumin, salt and pepper, coriander, and we'll start with that. Pretty simple. Oh, I guess there's the chipotles in it too already. Let's go ahead and make the pico de gallo now. 
I've got a whole basket of tomatoes behind me. When I was out there earlier with you, I noticed that there's more tomatoes that need to be harvested, which is amazing. So I didn't harvest any when I was out there just a minute ago though, because I knew I wanted to use these first. So let's get the blade in here. Where's my blade? Get our onions. We're gonna make this easy on ourselves and just do this right in the food processor. I got a jalapeno here. I'm gonna leave the seeds in since it's only one jalapeno and it's kind of little. So let's start with that. We're gonna do like a pico. This time of year, I try to have a, a thing of salsa, like pico de gallo type thing like this, in the refrigerator at all times. And right now I don't have any. Hmm. Every time I think I have figured out this food processor, I am not. I thought the hand was towards me. I have to take it apart every time too. I only used it five times this morning. Okay, let's see. I thought the handle, the handle goes towards me. I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> the blade goes in. I'm gonna try to make sure this works before I feel like it's locking. There we go. We're in business. Real life kitchen here, friend. but I think this is going to be a bigger recipe, like a more substantial amount. So I didn't think it would all fit in here. So here's my basket of tomatoes. All these tomatoes are already washed. Throw them in here. I've got cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes, all different kinds of tomatoes. I'm going to grab the ones that look like need to be used the first. We've got orange tomatoes and red tomatoes. I probably should have cut those tomatoes first. Let me just run it. Professional here. Just kidding, I'm not a professional. Don't do this at home. All right, everyone has at least one cut in it. Oh, I wanted to put garlic in this. I have some homegrown peeled garlic in the fridge. bit of coriander just a little bit a little bit of cumin good amount of salt lemon juice I'm gonna need to go get more Did I salt and pepper the chicken yet? <laughs> like, I can't even think if I've done that yet. I just had the thought. I should salt and pepper the chicken, and then I thought maybe I already did. That is so good. It does need just a pinch more salt, though. That one jalapeno. It's got a, the perfect amount of heat. There's just a warmth in my mouth, but not spicy, just a nice warmth. All right, now this is gonna go in the fridge too while we finish the rest of the dinner. 
It is so easy to make chipotle cilantro lime chicken. You have your cooked rice, and once you have your rice cooked, you want to add salt. You just season it to taste. And then the key with the cilantro lime chicken, or I'm calling it cilantro lime chicken, but the cilantro, and I'm calling it chicken, it's rice, <laughs> is actually to use lemon juice, not lime juice. So at Chipotle, they use lemon juice a lot instead of lime juice. And it kind of adds, I think, a little bit of a sweetness. So this is cilantro rice. So here I've got the rice cooked. It's nice and fluffy because I washed it. The Instant Pot cooks it beautifully. I'm gonna mix this, oh, and then I added a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna mix that up. Delicious, so good, so easy, and it's one of our favorites. So we will have tacos for dinner tonight, and then we will make up burrito bowls for leftovers. Josh prefers burrito bowls for leftovers. I've said that before. And so that's why I like to make a little bit of rice so that we can make some burrito bowls later. So here we have dinner, we have our rice. I went ahead and I heated up some tortillas. I tasted the chicken, it is delicious. I did not add salt and pepper, so I went ahead and added salt and pepper. We have our salsa, some cheese, sour cream. I grabbed some different condiments. So this is a, we made this together last summer. This is jalapeno tomatillo hot sauce. Some corn relish, this is the last of this. So I will be making more of this this year. I had some pickled onions in the fridge along with our coleslaw. So I will call Josh in and we will eat this dinner and then we will go out and pick some blueberries tonight for dessert. I think that will be really fun and I think it'll be really delicious. I'm excited about this dinner. I was wanting tacos, so I made myself tacos. So friend, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop the video where we made all of those zucchini, the mock pineapple and all of those recipes. I can go ahead and I will link that video right here if you're interested in that. I can pop another one of my videos down here. You can go watch between now and my next upload if you enjoyed this. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time.